Welcome back to Girls Next Level, everybody. Bridget and I are so excited because we have a really special interview for you guys today. We're talking to Arnie Freitag. He was one of the top photographers at Playboy for how long was it? 38 years, he said. Yeah. So he has all the behind the scenes dirt on how the Playmate pictorials were done, working on our pictorials, working with Pamela Anderson, all the good stuff. But first, we're going to talk about our pictorial and how it actually came out. Yeah. So where we left off last time, we were talking about our first Playboy issue coming out. So I brought a magazine for us to look at. Yay. So how did you feel about this first issue, Bridget? Was it everything you dreamed it would be? Well, you know, I mean, again, I have to take it back to how I felt then Uh versus how I feel now. (laughs) So back then, I was just so so ecstatic I was happy with everything I just couldn't believe the opportunity especially the cover Um, yeah and blown away and and did not want to be picky about it at all but looking back on it I have different feelings oh yeah we can pick it apart to death from today's perspective yeah I felt the same way I was just so excited to get the opportunity so grateful for it still am I think back then if there was anything I was kind of bummed about it was just that our individual photos didn't get used because I know we all three were so excited about those but still I was so excited like this was an opportunity I didn't think we were gonna get and we were on the cover and it, it just felt validating, especially like after all we'd been through with all like the mean girls and everything like that. Yeah. Not only did I uh, not, I mean, I never thought we would have another opportunity again. So to me at this time, this is it. Like yeah. This is our big opportunity. And um, I was I was more than excited. And before we even get to the pictorial, I'm flipping through the magazine and there's this section in front called the World of Playboy, which is just like kind of like a social page and it's just like pictures from Hef's parties and like what's going on in like the Playboy world and they show a picture of the three of us sitting on the director's chairs that Arnie gave us oh yeah he gave us this cute director's chairs they were white with our names embroidered on them in pink with like a Playboy bunny on it and our naked butts are sitting in those chairs in this photo with our drowned rat hair yeah our drowned rat hair <laughs> but yeah we love those it was a good gift so We have our pictorial, Mm -hmm. and on the first page, there's the picture of us hula hooping, which I think we both love that picture. I love that picture. I totally love that picture. And then the second picture, I don't know how I feel about. I think it's really goofy, because this is supposed to be like a magazine you know, full of naked women for the male gaze and it's supposed to be sexually arousing, and I don't think they're buying it to see a full page photo of Hef. Granted, we're in the picture, too, and I know it's his magazine. He can do what he wants, but it's a little odd to me that they use that as, like, prime real estate in this pictorial. I could see them using a little photo of it, you know, as a so-called... They used to, in the Playmate pictorials, call them story photos. Like, they'd have all the nudes of the girl, but they would also have, like, a picture of her clothed doing whatever she did in real life. Mm -hmm. So, to me, like, this picture, because the three of us were wearing dresses, like, we're going out to a club, we're standing by the limo in front of the house, and Hef is standing there in between us. And it's very... um, It's very much a story picture to me, and I feel like it should be little. It shouldn't be like the prime real estate first picture. Uh, Well, I think he's definitely making a statement here. Oh, for sure. So there's a reason behind (laughs) it. Can I just say I hate my toes? My girl, no, I was going to say that, but I hate my toes so much. I was almost embarrassed to say it because I don't want people running the picture to look. But my toes are like, I don't know if I'm putting my weight on my feet weird, but they're like scrunched up to where like my middle toes almost on top of my big toe. My, you, you're you right. Yours are. And mine are literally scrunched. And I have such long toes that I could play the piano with them. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so gross. But I think it's because we had been standing out there for so long and taking these photos and stuff and I think Hef just swings in at the last minute but we had to do all the lighting and all the like and we're standing on the hard concrete and these heels yeah it's these sky high heels and we'd been probably shooting all day at that point we had been shooting all day there was a little break in between but yeah so hula hoop 10 out of 10 limo picture 0 out of 10 (laughs) and then so the next double page spread is three different nudes of the three of us and it shows us standing outside the limo and we're inside the limo and I don't 
like these pictures because to me they look very sex tape. I see what you're saying because they have you holding the camera and pointing it at Kendra and I. Yeah. And we're all nude in the back of a limo. Yeah. And the camera I had because back in the day, Hef was trying to get a movie made on his life. And Brian Grazer was interested and they had, they had like optioned it for a minute and they were trying to come up with a script. And he asked me to get, he gave me a camcorder and he asked me to like, videotape random things whether it was like Hef waking up in the morning and of course Hef knew all this was going on obviously or you know us going out in the limo or like us out at the club or whatever like I wasn't recording anybody doing anything you know sexual maybe they were hoping I was going to I don't know <laughs> but I was just like I had tapes and tapes that I gave back to them of just like day in the life shit and it was probably actually surprisingly boring. But I think they were just super stumped. And the reason that movie never got made was they couldn't come up with a script. And I know Hef was super picky about it. Like I saw this contract where he had this long list of stuff that they couldn't do in the movie. Long story short, the movie never got made. Yeah, well, I remember them coming to the mansion. I remember them talking to all of us. I remember them coming to dinners. I remember the, you know, it being in motion. Yeah, like at one point, Oliver Stone was involved. Yeah. But it never happened. And it must it must have felt weird for Hef that, like, Larry Flint had a whole big, like, acclaimed movie made about him, but Hef never did. But there were other movies and, and like, series and things made. Janky. But, like, Hef wanted a real movie. Yeah. There was the one they did on Amazon. Did you ever see that one or hear anything about yeah, it? Yeah, wait, I did. It came out in, like, I want to say, was it, like, 2015? And it was, like, a documentary with, like, reenactments. Oh, th do you think it's weird that this picture cuts my head off? I do. I think it's, I do think it's weird. <laughs> and I don't love that photo of me. We're all standing outside the limo. Like I'm not sucking in my stomach as much as I could be. I have kind of like a stanky look on my yeah, face. Yeah, you have a strange look. And it's just, you know, when you see a Playmate pictorial with just one woman in it, they shoot that, like back in this era, they would shoot the centerfold for five days and then they would shoot what they call small camera, which is every other shot for another five days, if not more. Sometimes they would bring the model back for more days. And and you're just focusing on one woman trying to make her look the absolute best. So it comes out these perfect, sexy, angelic shots. Like mm -hmm. that's what we want when we want to pose for Playboy. But when you're trying to fit three different women into a shot and find like the best average shot of like the three women, not everybody's going to look as perfect as like somebody in a Playmate pictorial would, in my opinion. Right. And plus we're only shooting four days. We're not getting the two week special. I know. Why didn't we get to shoot for two weeks? I know, right? Especially <laughs> with three of us, we should have gotten to shoot for six weeks <laughs> yeah for sure the next picture is one of us in the heft bedroom set and we're all naked except for these colored pajama tops I feel like we're really retouched in this yeah. pictorial like they just smooth over our skin to the nth degree and don't get me wrong like playboy pictorials like they use a lot of diffusion. They use a lot of lighting. So it's probably less retouching than you think looking at these. But it's a lot in this picture. Like, I feel like everything is just so smoothed out. I look like one of those real dolls, those silicone dolls. You know what I <laughs> well, mean? Well, I feel like my face looks weird. Do you think it's retouching? Like, they're just smoothing everybody out so much? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it's just very weird. Almost makes my eyes look too far apart. Like my, I feel like they photoshopped over part of my eyebrows or something. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> and then there's our three in the shower picture, which is cute. We won't go there again. <laughs> we've we've talked that to death. Yeah, I don't have any complaints about this photo though, do you? I don't have any complaints. I think it's weird that none of us have any eye contact to the camera because I feel like that's one of the things Playboy always has is like eye contact with the camera so it feels like the person looking at it like you're looking involved, at them yeah yeah and as part of it is there with you and I just feel like there's none of that but I mean and then there's the grotto pictures and I think the grotto looks better than us <laughs> like I'm always amazed at what a beautiful pool it is this first photo is so over retouched and it's the one I talked about before where I feel like they retouched your face to just be lighter yeah well it's, I feel like it's the same problem that the other picture has yeah and like our teeth and eyes are too white like they went to town whitening out 
I love white teeth, but these look like chiclets. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's like the porno looking picture where you're pouring champagne on me and Kendra's looking it off. And then there's the final picture, which is like this double page spread of literally us naked on top of each other in the set version of Hef's Bed. And I remember when we shot this picture, we thought it was funny and we were just all giggling about it. But now I'm like, that's a little too sexual for me. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. To me, the the champagne pouring one was uh-huh. like a little bit like sexual to me, and this one I think is playful and fun. I can see why people would think it's more graphic than that, but yeah. I, I think it's playful and fun, and I think we all look really pretty in it. Yeah. So that's our that's our first pictorial, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's if we really have to pick it apart. Yeah. <laughs> So how do you feel about Photoshop in general? Like, do you Photoshop your pictures when you post them on social? Like, do you feel like it's bad or immoral to Photoshop photos? Or like, what's your feelings on it? I'm so on the fence about it. And I go back and forth depending on my mood on a given day. Obviously, everything that I post that's from our scrapbooks or whatever is just Mm -hmm. raw images and stuff. But today, I feel like if you don't do something to your pictures, people are going to rip them apart because they're so used to seeing completely tough touched and like like filtered photos all day long and it's gotten to the point where I see a lot on my explore page and Instagram I see old photos of celebrities like say Angelina Jolie from the 90s Monica Bellucci from the 90s like gorgeous top tier beauty women but in these pictures they're posting on Instagram now the people posting them put face app over the photos. So it's like, not only are you getting like this completely unrealistic beauty standard, Angelina Jolie, but you can see if your eyes are sensitive to it, you can see that there's a face app filter over it. But I think a lot of people can't see that. They just fall for it. And they're like, whoa, this is the best picture of Angelina Jolie I've ever seen. And I'm like, I remember before there was face app so I can see it. And (laughs) that's not the real photo. Or like Marilyn Monroe, people will face app her and put her on social and like I know those photos of Marilyn Monroe like the back of my hand I can tell it's face app but it's like the beauty standard just keeps getting more and more unrealistic and overall I don't think there's anything wrong with retouching your photos because we all want to look our best I mean sometimes you're out you're at a really cool place you take a really cool photo but the lighting fucking sucks so what are you gonna do you want to go fix it have you seen on Instagram speaking of the explore page have you seen like AI girls I think I have yeah I don't click on them or anything but I'm just just like that girl looks totally fake. And when I see stuff like that, or you see, have you ever seen like those real doll sex dolls where their bodies are like anime proportion with like the huge ass tits and the tiny waist? I'm like between like the AI girls and these real dolls, like are guys even going to be able to like get it up for actual women anymore? Oh my God. Like AI girls are going to be stealing your dick. <laughs> it's just like, I I feel like, you know, you hear about like the generation growing up with porn, like men turn 18 and like they can't function with an actual human because they're so used to like porn. Really? Yeah, that's a thing. Like people as teenagers are getting exposed to so much extreme porn that it like takes all that to get them off. And then they like can't function when a real person is in front of their face. Jeez. It's crazy. That is crazy. Speaking of porn, and you don't have to tell me if Nick watches porn or not. We don't even know. <laughs> but like in theory, do you care if your partner watches porn or no? I don't care at all. Me either. Well, I mean, I, I should preface that and say, I mean, as long as it's not a problem. Yeah, I think as long that there's not a weird like addiction where it's or weird stuff yeah. going on. Like, you know, n- then I'm totally fine with it. But, it, it, you know, there's there's people that have real addictions out there that can't get enough of it. Yeah. And it's crazy. Just people's differing views. And when I say this as an example I'm not shaming anybody's view it's valid but there's people out there who feel like if their partner watches porn that's straight up cheating oh no I don't think so at all yeah I don't I don't feel that way like I'm fine with it yeah I don't care (laughs) (laughs) especially if I'm not if I'm not even around like whatever you gotta do (laughs) you know but I'm also not opposed to watching it together yeah me either that I think that's totally normal and healthy yeah so definitely don't look at it as cheating though (laughs) <laughs> well, I just would want to make sure that there was nothing, you know, not that I would suspect this yeah. from Nick, but like if I were in a relationship, in a different relationship, or whatever, I just want to make sure there's nothing like really weird, like, you yeah, know, like really like 
unethical yeah. shit. Or yeah. Like, or like the porn where it's like they're basically abusing women and you're like, okay, is this even consensual? Right. Like, cause there's some, there's some people who bring up really valid stories about their time in the porn industry. And they're like, is any porn truly consensual? Like you never know what video you're going to stumble across where the person who signed up to work that day didn't know what was going to fucking happen on camera. Yeah. Like Stacy had some stories like that. Yeah. It's so crazy. Not that that was porn, but the fetish stuff. Yeah. I mean, well, some of Stacey's stories sounded so so dangerous like yeah. they need to have like a bondage expert on set to like make sure people aren't dying yeah but I think that these are so low budget things so that too. there's no way no anyone's gonna pay for that yeah I'm surprised you don't hear about like crazy true crime stories where like stuff is going wrong more often yeah it sounded like Stacy had some close calls definitely it's scary so we're going to find a little bit more about what happened behind the scenes. I'm so excited today because we have Arnie Freitag with us. So let's get into it. Yay. Okay, guys, we have an amazing guest today. We have a Playboy photographer extraordinaire, Arnie Freitag. He did our photo shoots. You know him from Girls Next Door. And we are so excited to catch up because, Arnie, I don't think I've talked to you since I worked at the studio, which was 15 years ago. Yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, you were my boss for a while. I know, it's so weird. You, you were so we my have fa- a lot to catch up on. You were my favorite boss, by the way. Oh, Aww. thank you. I yeah. love that. For real, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've ran into you a couple of times at some of the races and stuff. Yeah, I'm a real uh, IndyCar fan. And I'm friends with the Andretti's, and so yeah. are you. Yep, absolutely. What a great group of people. <laughs> really fun going yeah. there. It's so much fun. But we were just watching the episodes of Girls Next Door. We're on season one. And we were um, just watching the episode of our very first pictorial. Huh? And we and our cover shoot. And we just got so nostalgic. We're like, we need to talk to Arnie about this because it was so much fun. We had such a great time shooting it. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's what they call the good old days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure you know, but like it was like a lifetime dream for me to be in the magazine. I, know I mean, it was. I, I think it was for all of us, but yeah. I was especially mm-hmm. like just like so wanted to do it. And it was, it meant so much to me to be there and to be doing it finally. <laughs> well, it's a really special moment for me too because I think you guys were the most fun I've ever had shooting. Really? You had, you had very Wait. unique personalities. Wait, what? Are you just saying that because we're no, on here? Cause no, <laughs> no, I mean, no, because think about it. You're, you're, I always like shooting more than one girl because it's more of a challenge. I shot a lot of twins, which are a lot of fun because they play off each other, you know. Mm-hmm. But the three of you had three separate personalities, very unique. So it was fun to kind of work within the parameters that we had to deal with at the magazine, but to also work through your different personalities. So it was, a, it was not just challenging, it was fun. You know, it was so fun. And, and plus being on the girls next door, it was kind of goofy at times. And, you know, you guys wore <laughs> costumes. It was just fun. Except for one shoot. One I bet shoot? You, well, it was a cover shoot of the, Holly knows, Bridget yeah. knows for sure. And, and you're in three of you in a window. Mm. And Marilyn, my editor, um, <laughs> who has been a thorn in my side most of my life. Great editor, but boy, she was tough. Um, you know, made Bridget cry. And it was on TV. The Girls Next Door crew was there, mm-hmm. and they caught it. You know, and poor Bridget lost it, and uh, we had to stop the shooting and regroup. It was a real disaster, you know. Well, Arnie, I couldn't get my thumb right. Yeah, it was always... <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because... Um, Marilyn was so difficult at times because it would be something like a thumb or a finger or a hair or a foot or a toe. <laughs> and I would say, like, she would start yelling at me at times, like, we didn't see that toe. And I said, my <laughs> God, it's not, it's not heart surgery. It's not the brain. Yeah. It's just a picture of a girl. <laughs> you know? My God. It's so but, funny. But you saw the, you saw that side of her. Yeah, oh, for sure. For you sure. Know, and, and another funny story about that was um, when I was doing one of your covers, I think it was a, the second one, you were all on a bed and I was shooting down on you. And we first did it with white sheets. And I told Marilyn, I said, he's not going to, Hef's not going to like white sheets. They're not sexy. Yeah. No, 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 no. They're, man, that's perfect. <laughs> ah, you know. So we did it. And of course, he didn't like it. He wanted black, like what I suggested. So he had told Marilyn, to stay out of the studio and leave Arnie alone. Oh, my God. Right? And it was hysterical because I'm going. Was that a first? Yes, finally. 
Well, yeah, because, <laughs> you know, I didn't have direct contact with Hef. Everything went through her. Uh-huh. Right? So that was the other great thing about shooting at three of you. I had direct contact with Hef because you were living with him. Mm-hmm. So that made my job so much easier instead of going through a middle person. Yeah. But I guess, you know, he we were shooting in the studio, and she would peek in the door. And I think Holly goes, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> 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 it's really funny. That's so you know, funny. It, it drove her crazy. She couldn't be on the set, you know, and I was just <laughs> loving it. That is so funny. Yeah, that, was, that was great. That was a, that was a wonderful <laughs> thing for me. <laughs> How long did you work for Playboy? 38 years. Wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Whoa. It was like a life is. sentence. <laughs> but you know, it is. It's a lifetime. It's a life sentence. But, you know, the thing is, where else can you go? That was the top. That's as far yeah. as you go. Mm-hmm. So why would I leave it? Exactly. I absolutely loved, loved, loved what I did. I loved it. Yeah. That's amazing. You know, and it's incredibly fortunate uh, to have a job that you love, not just like, love. Yeah, yeah, so few people get you know, that. I was really blessed with that. It's wonderful. Well, um, I wanted to like get a little bit of your background because people know you from the show, but I feel like they don't know like who Arnie is. So you were originally from Chicago, right? Yeah, you know they're they're doing a documentary about me, um, exactly the same thing you're talking about about my life and how I started and the whole career and everything I was involved in. And I guess you guys have agreed to be honest, so I want to thank you very much yeah. for that. that that's, I'm really excited about that. So um, to give you a bit of background, I started off in art. And first of all, I was a terrible student in high school. Terrible. <laughs> My grades were awful. I couldn't, oh, no. I couldn't retain things. If I read something, it just didn't stick in my head. And even then I was thinking, what am I going to do for a living? You know, I can't. My grades are terrible. And one of my teachers called my parents and says, you know, Arnie's going to be fine. Just leave him alone. He's creative. He'll figure it out. He's not going to be, you know, an accountant or a lawyer or a doctor. He'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I I gravitated toward art because my mom was an artist, a very, very talented artist. So I went to art school for a couple of years and then I stumbled into photography because I had to take a minor and I thought, I'll try this. And I absolutely fell in love with it immediately. Aww. And I just had a knack for it. So I went to a professional school in Santa Barbara called Brooks Institute, which is a very strict, regimented, shoot architecture, products, definitely not girls, not women at all. <laughs> it, was, it was illegal to shoot nudes. Illegal. <laughs> Wait, it was really? It was illegal. It was so strict. Oh, when my I was, young, I was a young guy, right? And I like, still do, women. <laughs> So I started shooting all the girls I met in my neighborhood, and I was just inspired by some photographers, and I just really enjoyed shooting women. Portraits, you know, I had some nudes and sexy stuff. I was just doing it for fun. So my last class, the teacher said, do any assignment you want, shoot anything, no rules. Uh-oh. So I turned a nude <laughs> in, right? It was a black and white nude. Not explicit, just kind of sexy and girls covering herself, but it was really sexy. So he said, you know, you should be a playboy. And I said, what? I, <laughs> that never crossed my mind. That was like uh-huh. not even on the radar. He said, no, I'll get you an internship at Playboy. So I interned for a centerfold photographer named Ken Marcus. And when I was interning for him, I met Marilyn Grabowski, who ended up being my editor for 38 years. And she took a liking to me and my work and started giving me little assignments. And then it started. And then I started traveling and doing more and more work. And finally, She said to me, do you know how to use this really huge 8x10 camera that we use for centerfolds? And no one one uses that camera. Nobody. It's it's like for architecture only. Yeah. And for those of you at home who don't know, these 8x10 cameras, they looked like they were from the 19th century. Like they They were were. giant, like accordion cameras. And you had to sit behind it with like a sheet over you. Yeah. And the image is upside down and backwards. Yeah. (laughs) And Playboy used those for the centerfolds up until like... 2000 or something, yeah. right? Because yeah. of the highest quality. It was the absolute highest quality you can get. Yeah. So nobody knew how to use those cameras, but I learned it at my strict school learning architecture. So I said, yeah, I can use that. So she gave me a chance and I did a centerfold. It worked and that was it. it just took off. That's amazing. Yeah, that was a great story. Yeah. But so, but you were from Chicago, but you didn't start out with Playboy in Chicago. You started out with Playboy here in the West Coast. Yeah, I started on the West Coast. I'm from Chicago, but 
when I was 18 or 19, I said to myself, I'm tired of shoveling snow. This is not for <laughs> me. I'm out of here. So I went to school in Santa Barbara. But we want to play. We want to play a little game with you. Holly oh. has um, some questions that she prepared, and she yep. thinks she knows the answers, though. I do. So okay. we want to we want to do it kind of like the newlywed game. I'm going to okay. ask the questions, and then we're going to see if Holly got them right. Based hey, on what's, the pro- what's the prize? Just the satisfaction uh, of me okay. thinking I know everything. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I, so those of you who aren't watching this on Patreon, I already wrote down what I think the answers are because I had a handful of specific questions for Arnie. And as I was writing them down, I thought, I think I might know what some of the answers are. So I thought it would be fun if I wrote down what I think the answers are ahead of time okay. to see if I'm right. Okay. All right. Here's <laughs> the first one. Do you, I wish we had some cute game show music right now. I yeah. know. <laughs> Favorite photo shoot experience? Besides us. <laughs> well, okay. It was you, but... Uh, <laughs> all right. I don't think you're going to get this one because I think it's going to be kind of off the beaten path. Oh. But it was the Olympians that I shot. Oh, wow. Ding, 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 ding. I got it wrong. I said Karen Velez and Bora Bora. Bah! <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you about Bora Bora and Karen Velez. Here I am in paradise, right? And it is spectacularly beautiful in paradise in Bora Bora. But I had Marilyn with me. Oh! (laughs) And it was six days of constant complaining. Oh, no. It's too hot. I don't like that picture. Change the pose. I don't like the food. Oh, my God. Oh, so no. I had this beautiful plane of the year. I had my crew. I had this turquoise water, white sand beaches, palm trees, and then her. <laughs> oh, no. So before we move to the next question, though, tell us a little bit more about the Olympians. What year was that and what was so special about that shoot? You know, I don't remember what year. It's probably 2004 or so. So what, what happened was um, Playboy wanted to do a layout at Olympians. And one of my editors, who I didn't work with that often, gave me the assignment. And he said, all I want you to do is make it like a coffee table book, like an artsy coffee table book. That's, oh, that's, all, cool. that's all he said. No direction at all. None. Which was perfect for me. Yeah. Because I don't need that direction. I have my own ideas, right? Mm-hmm. So what I did is I took a stylus with me, a wardrobe stylus, and, of course, makeup. And I just traveled for, like, I don't know, six weeks and took these, I think it was like eight girls, and just went out around the country to photograph them in a natural surrounding. Because I felt their bodies are so beautiful because they're professional athletes, right? I'm not going to dress them up like a playmate. They're not playmates, right? They're not the girl next door. These are athletes. Mm -hmm. So I shot a lot of it in black and white, which they didn't use. But I took them out to the desert. I took them out to uh, the sand dunes. I took them out to the Salt Lake Flats. And I shot them. I just shot them without clothes. Because I thought, Uh well, they're so muscular and perfect. Why would I put clothes on them? A lot of times I use clothes to kind of hide flaws. But there aren't any. You know, and I wanted to show off their muscles. So I shot this layout. It was, I think, the best shooting I've ever done. And then when it got published, I mean, of course, they didn't use the pictures I preferred. They never did. But that's a different <laughs> story. That's a different story. Yeah. Um, I'm sure as models, you know that, too. They mm-hmm. always they weren't your favorite shots. You knew and I knew there were better shots to choose from. But yeah, that's what happened. Anyway, so <laughs> uh, the New York Times wrote an article about it. And they said, oh, my God, we read that Playboy is going to be doing a pictorial on Olympians. And here we go with the girl in the bed and the fluff and all that. <laughs> but the photographer, Arnie Freitag, didn't do that. He took it to an entirely new level. And he said, to our amazement, we were stunned how beautiful they were. That's amazing. You yeah. know? And then Christy saw that. Christy Hefner, Hef's daughter, who was the president of our company at the time. And she wrote me a beautiful letter saying thank you for raising the standards of Playboy. For doing oh, that's such so a be- awesome. Yeah. So that is why it was my favorite because I had no interference at all. None. Mm-hmm. And it was my own work that I did, my own ideas. Everything was, was me. And I was very, very proud of it. Very proud of it. That's so cool. Thanks. 
Yeah, that's an amazing story. Okay, the next question, <laughs> newlywed game, back to do 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 do. Okay, <laughs> favorite photos you ever shot for Playboy? But you have to. I guess you have to kind of pick a different one from Olympians then, because that yeah. would probably be your favorite, right? Yeah, so that was my favorite. <laughs> wow, that's a tough one. Well, I could say it, it's not any pictures I did while traveling because we traveled a lot. So I am striking out so hard because this was not a travel one, but I put Dita Von Teese because I remember you love that cover so much. I do love the cover. I have it in my, <laughs> in, in my home, actually. That's yeah. awesome. Tell if us what had, it looked like. If you had like. asked me what my favorite cover was, I might have said that. Oh, damn. I should have I okay. asked that. <laughs> All right. Wait, tell, tell, for those listening, tell them what it looks like. Um, it's a black background, which is great because she has really dark hair and she's wearing a black, super tight lingerie which is cinched really, really tight at her waist, really tight, because she would cinch her waist to a small, small diameter. So she had this like real curvy look. And it was just, there's hardly any color. Her skin is really white Mm -hmm. and the lingerie is black and the background is black. So it's just really stunning. Yeah. Didn't you say that about that cover, a lot of people asked you if it was retouched because her skin was so perfect and you're like, no, that's what it looks like. (laughs) Well, you know, what a lot of people don't know is that we didn't retouch at Playboy for so long because we didn't have Photoshop. It didn't exist. Mm -hmm. You know, occasionally they would retouch a photograph out of Chicago, a centerfold for, you know, something where you miss like a bruise or something. But that was a long process of airbrushing. And we just didn't do that. It's funny. I think that Playboy does have a really bad rap with that, like that they think everything's photoshopped and it just wasn't really like that. Well, you know, I did I did lectures for a couple of years when I left Playboy, and I always brought these transparencies of an 8x10 that we shot. The centerfolds were shot on an 8x10 camera, like you said, Holly. Mm-hmm. And I brought the originals to the to the seminars because I said, these are these are not retouched. You can't retouch a transparency. These are the original transparencies, and they're not retouched. Yeah. But we also spent average of five days doing one centerfold, just the one picture. Yeah, yeah. To get it because right. because it was you know it's something you looked at for a month right same picture for an entire month and Hef was very particular he wanted to be perfect and they were yeah okay next game show question ding 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 <laughs> <laughs> worst funniest or most frustrating shoot experience well uh, the girls next door cover was certainly one of them <laughs> we talked about yeah. we talked about that earlier yeah well, okay here well th- I. I said how great traveling was. Here's one story that wasn't so great. I went to Australia for four weeks, and we went all over. So they gave me a producer that worked for Australian Playboy. We were going up to Cairns, which is up on a Great Barrier Reef. Beautiful place. They take off next morning. I fly out to a couple of different beaches. I'm flying over the boat, and I say, hey, get the girls out for a picture. I'll shoot, you know, have them wave at the, at the airplane. And he goes, well, I can't do that. And I said, why not? He goes, well, they're all sick right now. What? They got seasick. <laughs> all of them. Because they, had, they were below deck and your makeup done, right? And oh, anybody, oh any, shit. Anybody knows boats, you never go below deck mm-hmm. if you're seasick, ever. So we anchor the boat. I'm waiting for the girls to come ashore. All of a sudden, I get a radio call. Your assistant's almost drowning. Oh, what? Well, the captain had what he thought anchored the boat. My assistant went out to swim out to it. The boat wasn't anchored. The boat started moving away, and my assistant couldn't get to the boat because it kept moving away, and it's too far to go back. So we had to get a raft to rescue the guy. Oh, my so, God. Oh, God. It, it gets worse. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it gets worse. So we all go back in the boat. So he pulls up the anchor. He starts driving, and all of a sudden, we hear this crash. He ran into a reef. Oh, no. And, and now the boat starts sinking. Oh, my God. Yeah, the boat starts sinking slowly, but it starts sinking. Oh, my God. So now we had a call to be rescued by seaplanes. So they sent out three seaplanes to rescue us. So did you ever get pictures? Not that day. Oh, Oh my gosh. Nope. Nope. Not that day. Okay. Next question. Favorite playmate? That's easy. I think it's Sarah Underwood. (laughs) No, I love Sarah, too, but I got it wrong. I wrote Marianne Gravatt. (laughs) Well, okay, you know, I'm going to give you a half credit on that because (laughs) Marianne was my favorite playmate, but I didn't shoot her. Oh, I'm thinking, but she was my favorite. You're right. So I remember asking you back then who your favorite playmate was. Yeah, (laughs) but as far as the one I shot, it was Sarah. Aw, 
Aww, I'll let her know. That's so sweet. Yeah. 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 Well, tell us what it is about Sarah that you liked. She has the freshest face I've ever seen. She's got these little freckles all over. And when I shot her, she was a student in Oregon. And she lives on her farm with her parents. It's truly the girl next door. Yeah. This girl, yeah. You, could, you could meet her walking down the street in Oregon or at the, the feed barn picking up feed for her cats. You know, I mean, she was just really a girl next door. And she looked the part. Simple and beautiful. Did you ever shoot but a Pam Anderson? I did. I shot her first test and I shot a cover on her. Oh, that's awesome. Which cover did you do? The one in the cowboy hat. That's my favorite one out Is of it? all the ones she did. It's so, so- I, I, she's got a she's got a book out, right? I haven't seen uh-huh. the documentary, but she's got a book out. And the LA Times reviewer said she was talking about her photo shoot, and he said apparently pointing her toe is a very big deal over at Playboy. Just like you say. <laughs> like I said, it was. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I love that cowboy hat cover. It's my favorite of all her covers. I think it's so iconic and so just original and not derivative of anything else. Thank you. Thank you. She was wonderful to work with. When I first laid eyes on her, I said, this girl's unique and special. And she's really, really a sweet person. That's That's awesome. Yeah. So then Girls Next Door comes along. And when the news came in that Hef says he wants to shoot his his three girlfriends, what were you guys thinking at the studio? Or what were you thinking? Were you guys like, oh, shit, here we go? Or Oh, no, no, not at all. Um, I was thrilled. Like I said, I like shooting multiple people together. It's more challenging. But I thought, well, this is great because now I got a chance to talk to these girls directly who have a direct connection to Hef. I said, it's going to be much more my control than before. Yeah. You know, and I knew you guys were fun. I knew you were really enthusiastic about it. So I just looked there as like a really fun shoot again and again and again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I was always worried that the studio was like, oh, great. Here we go with Hef's girlfriends no. again. Like, no, 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 not, no, no. Not, well, because I think you're very different than the other girlfriends. So, no, that wasn't the case. The first shoot is at the mansion. Were you nervous about shooting in the mansion? No, I love shooting in the mansion. It, it was so um, comfortable, and the people that worked there were so so enthusiastic about helping us out. Um, I remember too, we were shooting, we had like a busy schedule. We were shooting like the pool floaty in the, in the um, pool. Then we were doing like the hula hoop scene or maybe we did those vice versa, I think. And then it was the grotto and Hef comes down and he's like getting all grumpy about how long it's taking to light the grotto. And you have to tell him um, it's the grotto and it's really hard to light. And it's also very dangerous to light. (laughs) Well, I think it was, I think it was that shooting, I'm pretty sure, where we had light stands, you know, on the edge of the pool, and we had cords that would unplug the power if something happened. And he slipped, and he grabbed the light stand. And I was right next to him. And I grabbed him by the shoulder, and I pulled him back. Because if he pulled that light forward and and fell in the water, it could have been disastrous. Oh, my God. So I thought, I almost killed Hugh Hefner. I'm like, Oh, no. Yeah. So we took took a lot of extra care in the jacuzzi because it was dangerous with all lights. Yeah. I know you said you weren't nervous um, shooting with Hef around or at the mansion, but were were you nervous when you had to shoot Hef? Because later that night, we do a a scene in front of the mansion with a limo, and Hef is in our photos with us. It depended on the shot. Um, Those shootings, no, I wasn't nervous, but when you shoot Hef, you have very limited time you have maybe three clicks of a shutter and that's it <laughs> so i remember way before your time he wanted a christmas card from where the fountain was out in front with the entire house in the background lit up from the inside and him lit in front of the fountain so that meant i had a light the fountain the entire yard the driveway the outside of the house the roof and every room in the house and i did a test shot right i used 80 lights 80. And he looks at a test shot and he puts his arm around me and goes, Arnie, I live in a home, not a spaceship. Why are these, win- why are these windows glowing? Oh, my God. He goes, I want to see the wallpaper. Okay. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, so I had a, I lit every single room. And then when he walks off the shot, I get two frames. He goes, thank you very much. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, no. What? What? What if you blinked? What if? What if? You know? So those were, those were nerve-wracking. I bet. That's funny, though, but it totally makes sense, knowing his personality. Yeah, it, it, 
doesn't want to sit around taking pictures, you know. So um, when did you retire from Playboy? Um, well, I wouldn't exactly call it retire. <laughs> oh, what happened? But, well, they just announced that um, they're going to go with a different look and that we're not going to or not going to have our contracts renewed. What yeah. year was that? 2013, I think it was. And so Hef was no longer in charge of the magazine at that point? Um, he was, in, well, he was in charge of the magazine, but he had kept Steve and me on longer than the people in charge wanted to. Let's put it that way. Um, I think the, the new guys wanted to replace Steve and I both. In fact, they wanted to replace everybody, not just Steve and me. Everybody. So when Hess started, you know, being less involved, then that's when it happened. For him, like I remember somebody who I won't say who on the podcast, but somebody that we used to work with at the studio was telling me that 2015 was like the last year Hef was ever going to choose Playmate of the Year. So she was saying the company let him choose a girl who kind of looked a little bit like Pam Anderson in the face because they knew it was going to be the last year they were going to let him choose. Well, I think I shot that person you're talking about, and um, I didn't shoot a Playmate of the Year. I shot a Playmate of the Year, but not a Playmate of the Year. And then I ran into her somewhere else, and she was mad I didn't come to the Playmate of the Year party. And I said, I wasn't invited. That's fucked up. I know. Yeah. We were going to ask you that, too. We were going to ask, did you stay on the party list after your contract expired? No. See, no. that's so crazy to me because I feel like in our day, even if you weren't working for the magazine anymore, you still would have been on the list, like part of the family. Yeah. So. But I kind of suspect just because things got so weird, like right before Hef died, I, w- I was like, I wondered if you were still invited. No, no, not at all. You know, I used to go up there for Sunday movies all the time. Yeah. You know? And of course, the major parties, which were amazing. So that's too bad. When did that change start taking place? Like, I know you said 2012, 2013 was when you left, but they took over before that. When did they start taking over? Was it like 2009? Well, there was, they brought in an art director from New York to Chicago that replaced Tom Stabler. I don't know if you know his name. About four years before that. So um, he was, I outlasted him. So he's gone. But then they brought in somebody after that, right? They did. They kept bringing new people in and yeah. trying new things. And it was really a kind of an a uncomfortable situation because we were sharing the same studio and they didn't like us and mm-hmm. we weren't real fond of them. And they're all gone now, by the way. Yeah, everybody. So, and then they changed the whole look. They, they changed the entire look of the magazine. Yeah, there was no nudity for didn't a while. Work. Didn't yeah. Work. And now there's yeah. no magazine. And now there's no magazine. But some of those changes started way before that, like right they after did. we left, like the double magazines and stuff like they that. They did. I think that the Shannon twins were were like yeah. a July, August or something or whatever <laughs> month. Yeah. I remember. That was a cost cutting thing. Um, do you still see girls on the street today and think, oh, she would be good in Playboy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never old, lose that eye. I still old, think old that too. Is my heart. So after Holly left the studio, then who was in charge? Stephanie. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then um, and she stayed you, there to the end. After you left Playboy, what did you what did you do after that? I did lectures and seminars for a while, but I really didn't like it because um, I was teaching a super high level, which is way beyond what most people could understand. Yeah. And I didn't want to. I didn't want to go backwards and teach the basics. It's not my specialty is lighting and posing and all that, and I. I that's what I wanted to teach, but it was pretty much beyond most people's understanding. And I feel like the art of photography is so lost now, too, because now everybody just lives in Photoshop. Two things. I, when a camera first came out on a cell phone, I said, that's the end of photography. I guarantee yeah. that's the end of it. Yeah. You know, and I had editors actually say to me, I want to look like it was shot on a cell phone. I go, well, they shoot on a cell phone. Yeah. That's Why so do you weird. want it to look like that? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. That's strange. So, um, Hef passed away in September of 2017. Where were you when you found out Hef died? I was at home, actually. Very sad day. Very sad day. Um, did you find out just through the news, or did somebody call you? Someone called me. I what thought it was I- very. I thought it was very odd. There's no service. There's a very small. Not, there, there's a service much later. Hell's the mansion for a very select group of people. You know, it was weird because you pull up to the mansion and. The new owner had already taken down some trees and uh, everything was kind of under repair. And it just felt like no one was there. It felt like he had left. Eerie. Like everybody said it. that. Weird. Everybody said, everybody said that. Even though the physical building was there, it just felt like he's gone. Interesting. It is kind of eerie, but I think he had such a presence there that, you know, of course you felt that. Yeah. 
It's interesting that you say that too, because I wondered that if I ever went up to the mansion, like just say now, right now, I went up there today, if I would feel like, if I would sense Hef still there or not, like his presence still there. But it sounds like maybe not. I don't know. Maybe not. I haven't been there since, you know, the new owner took it over and that was it. Yeah. So um, I heard that the funeral was very corporate, like just a lot of corporate people. Well, I'd say it's 50-50. You know, there were a lot of friends spoke and there were corporate people that spoke. You know, I mean, he had he had both in his life. You know, he had a huge corporation and a lot of business people and also a lot of friends. So it was kind of a, a mix. I don't think it was one-sided or the other, you know. Yeah. But I'm so surprised you weren't invited. I'm very surprised you weren't invited. I'm I'm pissed that I wasn't yeah, invited. I don't, I don't I'm not surprised that I wasn't invited, but I'm surprised that Bridget wasn't. <laughs> Because I actively tried to go up to see him like the last few years of his life and wasn't allowed to go up. And I, I actively wanted to go and say goodbye when I knew that he was sick and wasn't allowed up and then not invited to the funeral. I just feel like that's unexcused. It's inexcusable. And I'm not the only one. There's so many playmates, too, that would have liked to have gone and weren't invited and weren't allowed up. And there's something going on that's just not right. No, I agree 100 percent. It's, it was very strange. Yeah. It didn't It didn't feel good at all. It didn't but feel like a, a lighter, proper goodbye. No, no, not at all. That's for sure. Um, but on a lighter note, what is Arnie up to now? I'm just um, hanging out, enjoying my life, and working my documentary. That's the dream. You know, it's well, honestly, I still like to be shooting. Not as much as I was because it was way too stressful, and I don't physically – I can't shoot 250 days a year. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I have friends who are in the business, and – Techniques have changed so much that we don't need all the heavy, heavy lighting equipment. Yeah. It's much lighter and faster, and digital certainly is much faster. So I miss, I miss the energy. I miss the camaraderie. You know, I'm used to being around a lot of people, which I'm not right now because you know I have my friends, but it's not like being in a studio with a bunch of people. Yeah. So it's a little bit different. I'm adjusted. I'm doing fine. I just looking forward to my documentary coming out. I, again, I, I can't thank you enough for agreeing to be on it. We're I can't wait to hear what you have to say behind my back. I <laughs> know. Be afraid. <laughs> I hope you have control over some of that editing. <laughs> I better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard that your life is full of a lot of golf. It is a lot of golf. because <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's something I've always enjoyed. And I was so bad at it for so long. So I never had. It just takes an incredible amount of time to learn that properly. So now I have the time. Yeah. Yeah, you know. But you um, still do some shooting? I do some, not a lot. You know, it's just too physically hard. With I still use the heavy lights and the sandbags and the sea stands and all that. And it's just not fun without a whole crew, yeah. you know. But yeah. I'm enjoying my life. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Well, I was just going to end it on saying we should all do a photo shoot together for old time's sake. That'd be fun. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> That'd be fun. It would be so well, fun. Bridget, I hope I see you at the race this, uh, this spring. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, hope so too. Arnie, this has been so fun chatting with you. I had a great time with both of you. Thank you so much for thank having me Thank you so much show. for doing this. this I wouldn't miss it for the world. Awesome. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. Take care, girls. Bye. 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 Okay, that was so much fun to catch up with Arnie. I know, I loved it. But you know what happened though, is of course I start editing the episode and I start thinking of like 5 million things we didn't ask. Of course. Just dumb stuff like, what were your favorite celebrity covers? Like we talked about the Dita Von Teese one, but you know, what else over the 40 years you worked there? Yeah. And did anybody ever bail on a Playmate shoot midway through? And like, how did you guys handle that? Like, I never heard about that happening, but you never know because obviously he was there way longer than I was. Yeah, in 38 years, you'd think it had to have happened at least once. Yeah, and I wanted to ask him about shooting like the WWE Divas and how was that? I guess we just have to have him back on. I know, so many <laughs> Arnie, things. Arnie, we still have a lot of questions for you. <laughs> yeah, and I asked on our Girls Next Level Instagram, like, what would you guys ask if you could ask a Playboy photographer anything? But of course, I did that after the interview. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just booting up for next time. Um, and some, But here's some interesting things we can talk about. Like, somebody asked, have you ever declined to photograph someone you questioned age on? And I feel like that, it wouldn't have gotten to that point just because Playboy always asked for like IDs yeah. before people came in to make sure they were over 18. But there was this one story that happened while we were there. It was right before I started working at the studio. They shot this girl, shot her whole centerfold, the whole pictorial, everything. And then 
later, I guess her and her mom came in and confessed that she was only 17 and had been using a fake ID the whole time. Oh my gosh. So that's crazy. I remember that happening. Like, I wonder what would have happened if that got published and then they would have came out with that later. But like, would they have still gotten in trouble for it? I wonder. I don't know. So weird. And she didn't, like, she looked young, but not to the point where I would have ever looked at her and thought, oh, she's not 18. And she, like, already had her boobs done and stuff. Right. So I can see how they didn't catch that. But the weirdest thing about it, and I knew this girl, you know, because we ended up, like, reshooting her once I was, like, interning at the studio. And I thought she was really nice. I really liked her. But it was weird to me because... She said she still wanted to pose. So they're like, okay, come back after you turn 18. And I wonder what the thought behind that was. I would have like ran the other way and been like, nope, sorry. Definitely. Like, first of all, they cost the company a lot of money by doing Mm -hmm. that because they had to scrap the entire pictorial. And then secondly, like you said, the jeopardy they put them in, like they could have gotten in big trouble for publishing that. And to just do that and then invite her back, no way. I would never have done it if it were my company. Yeah, but then I wonder, like, did they invite her back because they don't want it getting out and they think she's, like, not going to talk? Oh, like, oh, like a hush thing? Like, we're going to, we'll still publish you? We'll, we'll reshoot it and publish you as long as you don't bring this up? Maybe. I mean, I never heard anybody say that, but I just I just remember thinking it was a weird choice or was Hef just being a mega perv and being like, yeah, let's get this girl the second she turns 18. Like, I, I don't know. Ew. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I definitely would have run the other way. Yeah, it was weird. Um, but I uh, but I too know her and I thought she was very nice. No, I really, really liked her. Yeah. <laughs> so it's nothing against her personally. Yeah. It's the actions that I would have and being a, if I putting myself mm-hmm. in Playboy's shoes, what I would have done. Yeah. As a company, I would have felt like, nope, liability. Yeah. Somebody asked, what were they looking for? Meaning when somebody tried out for Playmate. I shot twice and didn't make the cut. I think that's an interesting thing to talk about, too, because so many beautiful women tried out that didn't make it. Yeah. And it's just that there's only 12 slots a year. Mm -hmm. And also it depends, like, you know, the magazine's looking for a variety. And who are you up against? Like, the most of a certain type that we got trying out, at least when I worked there, you'd think it was platinum blonde because you saw a lot of that in the magazine. But it was actually, like, dark blonde. Mm -hmm. That was by far the most. So that was, like, if you had, like medium to dark blonde hair you were dealing with the most competition for like those slots yeah I also feel like you know having been on the other side of things having been in casting I feel like if you're getting into the entertainment industry in an ideal world everybody should like intern for six months in casting because once you understand how casting works and you see it from the casting director's side I feel like you take shit less personally really that's good to know because I like stopped auditions and all that kind of stuff because I just couldn't handle it anymore yeah because it's not necessarily about you it's about they're looking for a certain thing and they might have all kinds of weird criteria that you don't even know about they might have already worked with three people who are your quote-unquote type Kitten Patrol, I love that name, asks, which makeup artist did they use back then? Alexis Vogel. Alexis Vogel did work for Playboy for a really long time, but she was kind of phased out by the time we got there because she was just doing a lot of celebrities and she was really expensive. Even by even when I tested in 98, it was mm-hmm. Kimberly, Kim X. Yeah, when we worked there, it was Kimberly X, Sarah Cranham, and Joyce Benelli were doing the makeup. I don't even think Joyce was doing it yet. She kind of came in sort of like while we were there at the end kind of yeah Yeah, because Sarah knew Joyce yeah and then she started working at the studio too yeah (laughs) somebody asks did they also hand out drugs to the girls while shooting or just alcohol what I I mean (laughs) granted these playboy shoots took place over decades so I can't speak to what happened over decades and obviously Arnie would know more than me I would hear girls talk about every once in a while being offered a glass of wine if they were old enough and if they were like really nervous or something. Mm. But when I was at the studio, that was never a thing. Well, I've never been to the studio and seen like alcohol anywhere. Like there's not like bottles of wine or champagne or like a bar set up anywhere. So I feel like if a girl 
requested a glass of wine or something, or if they were to offer it, somebody would actually have to like go and get it specifically for that girl. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like it's just something that was standard. Like, here's the bartender. What do you want? <laughs> yeah, definitely not handing out drugs at the studio. Um, if they were going to be going out with Hef later, that might be a different story. But as far as I saw, the studio was really professional. Yeah. So we're going to have the uncut version of the Arnie interview because we actually talked for an hour and a half. We talked for an hour and a half and I can still think of questions I didn't ask him. But that'll be up on our Patreon at patreon.com slash girlsnextlevel. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, guys.